Coming up, we'll tell you what we know about a multi-vehicle crash southeast of Sioux Falls Monday evening. Plus, how Sioux Falls Parks and Rec is offering families a place for their kids to play. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. We're waiting to learn more about a multi-vehicle crash southeast of Sioux Falls. The crash happened early Monday evening near the intersection of Highway 11 and 85th Street East. Here's a look at the scene. Our Cutland News crew could see four vehicles being towed away. Two pickups, an SUV and a minivan all had damage. Highway 11 was closed for a time from 57th Street South. Several agencies responded to the crash, including Highway Patrol and the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. We've reached out to both departments and are waiting to hear back. Stay with Kettle News on Dare and online for updates as they become available. One person was shot in the leg after a confrontation in Central Sioux Falls Sunday night. Police say two adults and a child were walking along the sidewalk when they picked up a toy. The victims say someone in a nearby house started yelling, accusing them of trying to steal the toy. That's when more people came out of the home yelling at the victims. The woman ended up pulling out some pepper spray and basically just started spraying those people, that crowd. The guy that had originally yelled that came from the house, um, that's our suspect, he pulled out a gun and shot the woman in the leg. Police say the woman's injuries were considered non-life-threatening. Authorities arrested 35-year-old Dwight Green on a charge of aggravated assault. The Brookings Police Department is looking for a person who robbed a store Sunday night. Investigators say a man entered the corner pantry along 6th Street and pointed a handgun at an employee demanding cash. The employee was not hurt. The suspect is described as a skinny man about 6 foot, about 5 foot 6 and is soft spoken. He was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt that possibly had red and white print across the chest. He was also wearing a black mask and black pants. Turning to weather now, Kelloland is seeing a break from our recent 90 plus degree temps to start the week. But how long will the break last? Let's find out with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Good morning, Brian. Yes, good morning. Well, it lasts just a little while longer, really, this morning. And then after that, we're already in the 80s this afternoon and hot tomorrow. That's the way it's looking. And as we bring up uh, our forecast, as we see those numbers in the 40s and 50s this morning, Quickly, by midday, a lot of sunshine expected and temperatures here climbing through the 70s. I think that uh, by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, quite a few folks are in the lower to middle 80s. Now, you will notice there are a couple of thunderstorm cells that pop up in northwest Iowa. There's a kind of a small conditional risk of severe weather in that area. And that actually does run even into southeast South Dakota around Vermilion and Yankton. So just kind of keep that in mind, too. There might be a few storms, but they'll be pretty widely scattered. More details on better chances of rain later in the week coming up. Thanks, Brian. It was a whirlwind romance that went awry. Dana Adamson got married as soon as she turned 18. Less than a year later, in March 2002, she was found dead in the Centerville home she shared with her 27-year-old husband, Rain. Could this be a suicide? Possible. Could it be a, 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 could it be a murder? Probable. Could this be, could this be an assisted suicide? Possible. So to this day, investigators have never been able to fully answer who pulled the trigger. Angela Kennecke looks into the unsettling evidence in this 19-year-old cold case in tonight's cold case investigation. Parks and Recreation is offering families a place for their kids to play while they're busy during the day through the Outdoor Supervised Playground program. Parents can drop their kids off at one of 12 local parks for free. Park staff provide them with a number of games to play with anything from basketball and long jump to Mancala or Jenga. Five of the 12 parks, like Prairie Trail, are open only in the mornings, while the others are in the afternoon or evening. If they're looking for something to do right in their neighborhood, they can look out the window, see their neighborhood friends out playing games, and welcome to join in. He goes on to say it provides a fun and convenient way for kids and families to connect through their neighborhood park. The program runs through the first week in August. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, weather as we look forward into the forecast. So we've got the heat coming tomorrow. One thing I do want to share with you, though, is the, uh, the dew point, the moisture that's available for any future rain chances. So you're going to see tomorrow 
Dew points might come up a little bit in the morning in Sioux Falls, but even in the afternoon, that'll probably drop. We're forecasting 90 degree weather. By Thursday, of course, in 100s also, I need to mention that in Pier tomorrow. But look at this. Thursday morning, there's actually a little more starch to the atmosphere, a little more humidity. Now, the question I have, and I think that's important to bring up this up, is how far north is that air mass going to go? It's encountering, you know, all this swath of severe drought here into uh, parts of southeast South Dakota. So it is not a done deal that the dew point's actually going to get up to 70. If it holds even in the mid 60s, I'd be pretty happy with that. I do think it lends itself to an opportunity to get some thunderstorms. Now, future casts from central Wisconsin into southern Minnesota, southeast South Dakota, and northern Nebraska tends to develop areas of showers and thunderstorms. You notice to the north, it's not nearly as much coverage. And so we're very careful about Brookings and Watertown and Aberdeen at this point initially. Now, let's see what happens going into Friday. There's a secondary wave that's coming in from the northwest. So what that does is it tries to fill in a little rain back through central South Dakota. That's the most promising outlook we have on future cast. Now, the European model will differ with the American on that. So be careful as we look at model one, model two. This is the European version of that. And it collectively is suggesting an inch of rain in Sioux Falls. And that's not an outlier. It's not just one little piece of data. There's actually fairly good agreement of getting us close to that one inch level. And that's a huge piece of news. Uh, that doesn't happen, hasn't happened in a long time. Uh, let's again keep that in mind as we look at model number two. Now this is still suggesting some amounts of an inch or more. All fine and dandy if it happens. It's a drought year. Drought years can be tough to overcome these predictions. So uh, a half an inch of rain, I think that seems like a reasonable bet. And if it gets to be more than that, that's all the better, right? As we look at the forecast, it's a kind of a one window deal again. It's a Thursday, late day into Friday, chance of rain. And then the temperature at least is not terribly hot. I think we're probably going to settle in the 80s for several days. So that's your good news. This Aberdeen forecast, 101 on Wednesday. I know that's hot. 93 Thursday, 87 Friday. Again, chance of rain is around in that thir Friday, Thursday, Friday time period. Uh, we have more details to organize on that. So continue to watch for updates as we get a little more clarity and focus on where that's going to be lining up. But uh, hopefully the end result is some cooler weather, including the Black Hills, as we end the work week on Friday. Check out details. A lot more to say about this online at Kelloland.com.